Well, now that you can actually uh, solve a proportion for a missing number using cross multiplication, you're ready to take a look at ratio and proportion uh, word problems. Uh, if you take a look at this one, it says a stick one meter long is held perpendicular to the ground. Um, what perpendicular means is at a 90 degree angle, so it's kind of like it's standing straight up. So let's just draw the ground, and here's the yardstick standing up. Uh, let's change a different color on that. Standing up at a 90 degree angle. Um, the height of it from the very top to the bottom is one meter and it's casting a shadow. Let's just say the shadow is off to the left and it says it's 0 0.4 meters long. So here's the shadow. This is the um, stick and it's, it's standing there like that. And then it says at the same time an electrical tower. So here's this huge, you know, tower and it's got all of these weird legs and all the power lines are, are running into it and the height of this thing is 112 meters long whoops i'm sorry the shadow is actually going to be 112 meters long so from here to here is 112 meters and what they want to know is is hey how tall is this thing well we use a proportion to set it up so let's take a look at a, a better picture of it here's the stick right here one meter tall and the shadow is 0 0.4 meters the shadow of the tower is 112 meters and instead of writing a question mark we're going to write an x so use a ratio in other words it doesn't say uh, figure it out any way you can you've got to use a ratio and proportion to solve it. So we've got um, slots for four different numbers. We've got three that we can put in, but we've got one that's missing. So it's very similar to, to what you've done before. Well, let's take a look at the shadow length here, okay? And let's make a ratio of uh, comparing the shadow length to shadow length, okay? Well, um, the shadow length for the stick is 0 0.4 meters and the shadow length for the tower is 112 meters okay i know the height so let's just put a, a height here okay the height of the object is one meter for the stick so i'm putting on the same level of the proportion um, as the shadow so the stick um, information is up on top and because the tower information is bigger I'm putting that on bottom I don't know how tall it is so there's an X so now you can actually cross multiply like you're used to doing um, 0 0.4 times X is let's put this in red 0 0.4 X so 0 0.4 times X is 0 0.4 X equals 112 times 1 so let me highlight that for you just so that way you can see it. Some people are more visual. 112 times 1. So now um, we can just say, okay, 112 times 1 is 112. How do we get the 0 0.4 away from the x that's multiplying it? So we can divide by 0 0.4 and divide this by 0 0.4. And we find out that x is equal to... 280 and we've been talking about meters see it was meters and meters and meters so this x is going to be listed in meters now we know that x is 280 so the height of the tower is 280 meters now you need to get in the habit of after you go through and do all of this beautiful work of drawing a picture labeling it setting up your proportion and labeling what each side represents you need to restate what it wants. The tower height is 280 meters. And it doesn't hurt to go ahead and write meters right there, or at least put an M on there so people understand it. Okay, so after you do all of this work at the very bottom, make sure that you write it out. Now, let's take a look at a few other ratio and word problems there and see how you do. 
if four pounds of jelly beans cost six dollars and eighty two cents how much would two pounds of uh, cost so let's see we've got uh, pounds and cost and cost is what we need so let's just go uh, separate it into the, the two categories there we've got pounds and we've got cost let's put an equal sign in there and I know that uh, we've got uh, two pounds see there's that one and we've also got four pounds okay and uh, now we've got cost so uh, let's go ahead and set this up here the cost is six dollars and two cents is it connected to the two pounds or the four pounds well it's four pounds of jelly beans cost 682 so it's connected to the four pounds let's put that on the same level of the proportion that way you know that uh, the four pounds and the 682 are together okay and uh, so you won't forget that cost is money let's go ahead and stick a dollar sign on here too and so now if we could just find out this missing X the missing value of two pounds we'd be okay so at this point we cross multiply four times X is four X and two times 682 let's see I'm pulling up my calculator right now thirteen dollars and sixty four cents so now we can divide by the four because it was multiplying the X divide the other side by four thirteen dollars and sixty four cents divided by four is going to be three dollars and 41 cents and 4 divided by 4 was 1 so x equals three dollars 41 cents that's how much it cost now i just said previously we need to after we do all of this great work um, of going through and actually restating it so two pounds of jelly beans let me fix the F there. You can't be sloppy. Cost $3.41. There we go. We've restated it. Now, um, number two, and then we'll do one more after this, and, and then that's it for the video. Um, Ashley drove from Memphis, Tennessee to Atlanta, Georgia. She drove for five hours and 45 minutes and drove 391 miles how far did she travel in one hour well we've got extra information here we don't really care about where she started or where she went and the fact it had the word two in there could have been messing with some people but focus more on the numbers you notice we've got three numbers and they want a fourth number set up a proportion the missing number is going to be your variable and we'll be okay so how can we do this um, well actually these two numbers are connected five hours and 45 minutes and we drove 391 miles in that time so these two are connected uh, how far did she travel in one hour? So they hid that one there. So let's see, one hour, how far? I, I don't know. So how can we use this to set it up? If we can somehow set it up as a proportion, let's just say uh, time or time driven was five hours, 45 minutes, and the other time that they're wanting to know is how far did it drive in, in one hour well uh, over here we know that in five hours and 45 minutes it took 391 miles but we don't know how long uh, how much they traveled in in one hour so that's a proportion but this is still causing some issues how can we get around that um, let's let's brainstorm here a little bit uh, this is hours I wish it was all hours or all minutes and that's the options you've got put it all in minutes or hours but since this is hours let's put it all in hours how much of an hour is 45 minutes 
45 minutes out of a total of 60 minutes is 3 fourths, which is the same as 0 0.75, which is 5 plus 0 0.75. It's 5.75 hours. That's how we can get away with it. And, and why did I choose to go with hours? Because the question is, is how far did it travel in, in one hour? So 5.75 times x is 5.75x and 1 times 391 is 391. So um, at this point we can divide both sides by 5.75 and we get an answer of 68 x equals 68. In this case, since it was set up over here, we should label this side of the proportion as miles. This way we know that x will be in miles also. And as long as your handwriting's better than mine, you'll be in good shape. Um, in one hour, let's see who is driving in this problem? Ashley. In one hour, Ashley drove 68 miles because the question was is how far did she travel in one hour and one hour actually drove 68 miles you could actually change to say traveled I, I like using the same words that the question does so travel past tense already happened how far did she travel in one hour and one hour actually traveled 68 miles all right last one Number three, out of every six students surveyed, one listens to country music. At that rate, how many students in a school of 1,200 listen to country music? Let's see. Um, well, let's just have a, a side of the proportion listed as listen to country music. And... Um, number of students. We'll just call this one number of students. Now let's see. One, listen to country music, so I'll put a one there. Out of six students. So that's our one to six ratio right there. Okay. And now we're going to set up um, the, the, the um, amount for 1,200. If, if the, there were 1,200 total students, because it said how many in a school of 1,200. So that's referring to the number of students, how many actually listen to country music. So here's our proportion. It's set up. Um, 6 times x is 6x, and 1 times 1,200 is 1,200. Now we can divide both sides by 6 to free the x. And we know that x will be 200 students because 1,200 divided by 6 is 200. Now we can just restate it. In a school of 1,200 students, comma, 200 students would listen to country music. And that's assuming that that ratio of one out of every six students uh, held true, but uh, with this problem you would have no reason to, to think otherwise. So, um, remember, when you go to set up a proportion, label each side of it. Uh, like this is listening to country music. So this is the one person that listened to country music. Uh, this is the unknown number of, of people that would listen to country music. This was uh, joining with the first proportion, one to six people. One out of every six people listened uh, to country music. So this was like the total number of students. And they were asking about the 1,200 at school. That lets you uh, set up the proportion. So that way then you can cross multiply like we did down here solve for the unknown number, and then always restate your answer.